Hey, in this video, we're going to take a look at how to make this Rive button linkable and how to have this cursor change into a pointer when you hover it and actually open your website in a new window. So let's take a look at how to do that. Uh, if I open Rive, we're going to look at the file here and you'll see I have three events set up. I've got one for the URL itself. I've got one for hover on and one for hover off. If I play the Rive file here, you'll notice that when I hover, the hover on event fires. When I hover off, we get the hover off event. And when I mouse up, the URL fires. So that is how we're going to reference these events in the code itself. One thing to know is that for the URL event, I am using the open URL event type. So usually when you add an event, it defaults to the general type, um, which doesn't give you the URL property. But if you switch it to an open URL, it's going to give you a field to add a URL in here. And then these other ones are just general ones. And you just need to know the name of them. Firing the events when they enter the states for these. So I've got an idle state and a hover state. And that's when those events are hovering. So once you get all of that set up, you can export your .riv file, and that is how we're going to make it work. So to get the JavaScript runtime running on your website, you need to make sure you install the dependency. So there's a link to it here in the Rive docs. Uh, you can also check the uh, you can check the feature support to see which features you're using and which version of the dependency you need to use. So if you go to feature support, you can see we're going to use events. So I'm going to scroll down to here, Rive event support. For web, that's the JavaScript one. You need to be using version 2.4.3 or later. You can also access that on uh, the NPM. You can see the most current version at the time of this recording is 2.15.6. I am using 2.15.6, and I'm using Slater to host my JavaScript code. And that is a pretty strong recommendation, I would say. Using Slater is uh, definitely a power up for working with Rive and runtime code. And that's how I'm making it work. So as you can see, I've got my page set up here. And here is actually where the canvas is. Rive files run in a canvas. And this is set up as a custom element. And so if I go into the settings, you can see I've changed the tag to canvas and I've added an attribute so it has ID equals canvas. Also given it a class that has the dimensions of the artboard um, that I set up in my Rive file. So if I go over to Slater, you see this is the code that is making this whole thing work. Slater is awesome because once you've got it connected to your site, you can create a new file. These are all the projects that I've created on this site where I experiment constantly with Rive animations. So I'm going to uh, try to explain what is here. In this part, uh, from line 2 to 14 here, this is the setup of the Rive instance. So we're going to make a new uh, variable called R, which is going to create a new Rive file. And I'm going to reference the source. I have it hosted on Upload Care. And uh, I'm linking to the, the .riv file directly. Um, and then here, the canvas is where I'm referencing the canvas on my Webflow website. Right. So autoplay is going to be true. Um, I'm going to reference the specific artboard name and the specific state machine name. And in the Rive file, You'll find those in the hierarchy. There's a new artboard. That's the default artboard name if you don't change it. And then uh, state machine one is also the default state machine name if you don't change it. This is a newer API feature. Is touch scroll enabled? This one's really helpful if you're using a touch device. If you don't include this, this is optional. But if you don't include it, um, the user won't be able to tap and swipe on the Rive canvas itself and actually scroll the page. It will only do the Rive interactions that you have set up. All right, and then there's on load. And this is where I'm going to get the inputs from the state machine. And I'm going to get the hover Boolean. Um, that is the name 
of the input that I have set up in the Rive file. So here you go, if I look at my state machine, I have this input, which is a Boolean um, called hover. So that's where I'm referencing that in the code there. And then I'm calling this a uh, resize drawing surface to canvas. That is really helpful. If you change the size of the window, it will make sure it resizes proportionally. All right, then down here, we're creating a function for getting the Rive events. So we're going to get event data from the Rive events. And then uh, we're going to get the properties. I actually don't think I'm using this particular thing. I am, however, going to reference the names of them. So I'm going to say if the event name is URL, which is the name of my uh, open URL event. If it is uh, URL, window open, event data dot URL. So that's going to reference the URL that we've set in this particular event. And again, this is only a property because it is an open URL type. If it's a general one, we don't have that particular property. So that's where I'm referencing that. And I'm saying when that event fires, open the URL that's listed on that property in a new window. All right, and then I'm gonna say, otherwise, if the event fired uh, is called hover on, then I wanna change my cursor. So let me show you what happens if I comment these ones out. The little button still works and I can still click it and it'll load the page, but the cursor doesn't change into a pointer. So it might not seem like it's actually something you can click. So I do think that changing the cursor into the pointer really helps to indicate that that is a clickable button. So let me uncomment this section. And what it is saying is when the hover on event fires, then change the cursor style to pointer. And when the hover off uh, event fires, change the cursor back to auto. So that is the code that's driving that. This is also um, an important part of making this all work. This is uh, what lets the Rive runtime code reference the events themselves. So I can share the link to this code in the video description below. You'll be able to grab this and copy and paste it. Make sure you paste in the correct value for your uh, Rive file location, your artboard name, your state machine name, and your variables. So um, hopefully that's really helpful. Please let me know if you have any questions. And I hope soon you will be adding interactive Rive buttons that are linkable on your websites. Thanks. Yo!